Right. I want to uh, move on just to talk about travel. Well, things maybe didn't go absolutely, absolutely right, and what I what I learned from it from my personal involvement. Yeah. Uh, this is this is the EPOP trial. Um, this was a, a multinational integral trial coordinated by URTC uh, with a French chief investigator and uh, CRUK uh, supported this trial in the UK. And in fact, the, the UK put, put the largest uh, number of patients into this, into this study. Um, basically, this was a study of um, perioperative chemotherapy in patients with operable colorectal liver metastasis. So they got three months chemotherapy before the liver surgery, operation, and then three months more afterwards, compared to uh, surgery alone. Now, the problems that arose with this trial is that although this was in theory an international intergroup trial, there was really virtually no discussion between the participant groups and the ORTC or the chief investigator. And astonishingly, at that time, AORTC did not have DMX or independent trial steering uh, committees. Um, there was no discussion really about when to stop recruitment to the trial because it was recruited very well in the UK and continued to do so until it was uh, stopped. And the data was analysed purely and simply to meet a deadline uh, to present at, uh, at ASCO. So what was the outcome? Well, the, um, this was an intention to treat trial, and the primary endpoint was a difference in progression-free survival at three years. And as you can see, taking the primary endpoint into consideration, the patient, the, these are the, the, the control and the, the chemotherapy group. And as you can see, the uh, hazard ratio just crosses unity. And so, by the primary endpoint of the trial, uh, it just missed being statistically significant. And there is absolutely no difference that the reason for this was the premature analysis in order to meet uh, a presentation uh, deadline. Now, certainly, if you take out the non-eligible patients, you, you become significant. And if you just look at those who had operations, uh, more so. But nonetheless, by the primary endpoint, uh, the trial failed. Reasonable, eight uh, percent progression free survival difference at three years. Pretty, pretty reasonable, but nonetheless, by the primary end point, uh, unsuccessful. So what did I learn? Well, first thing is never work with EORTC. <laughs> it's a, it's the European Union in microcosm with all of its problems. So don't do it. Second thing is do not trust. <laughs> do not trust the uh, French. Um, the third thing is uh, ICH GCP actually has a purpose. You know, we all hate having to do our GCP training every couple of months, it seems now. But the fact is, it really does serve a purpose. And if there were DMEX trial steering committees involved in this trial, uh, this would not, this would not have, this would not have happened. So, just in, in finishing one last trial uh, thought, since we're uh, uh, at. Uh, UCL, we should probably uh, put up a, a, a local uh, run trial. Um, what does this illustrate? Well, how, uh, this is a problem. How do you demonstrate that chemotherapy works if there's no proven regimen in any other trial, but it's impossible to recruit to a trial that doesn't have uh, treatment in it? And this is a problem we face from, from time to time. Well, the solution is. Uh, probably to demonstrate that more intensive therapy is better than less intensive therapy, because then at least you have established that you've got something that significantly affects uh, outcome. And this is ABCO2 trial, uh, uh, John Bridgewater, chief investigator at, uh, at, at, at UCL. Now this is a trial in advance that biliary tract cancer, that is, uh, that's recurrent after operation or, 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 or inoperable. The intervention is uh, more intensive chemotherapy with gemcitabine cisplatin, and the control is gemcitabine alone. This, this was presented uh, last year <coughs> as, uh, as a plenary in, plenary in ASCO. And as you can see, uh, overall survival 
in this very refractory cancer is shown to be significantly better uh, in the patients given more intensive chemotherapy. And uh, if we're talking about trials of chain practice, this overnight pretty much has become the world standard in treating advanced uh, filary tract cancer. And in fact, uh, the UK is probably, or unquestionably now, the world leader in doing trials in hepatobiliary cancer with the, the pancreatic group, the adjuvant trial uh, of, of uh, receptive biliary tract cancer, and the more recent trials that are being set up in advanced, in, in advanced disease. So, um, in, in conclusion then, um, we have made a lot of progress in the multidiscipline treatment of gastrointestinal disease. And there's a consistent effect, as I've shown, across all, the whole spectrum of GI cancer uh, with, with adjunctive treatments. Now, Dion asked me uh, to gaze into the future a bit, and in fact, as, as you see, Dion, I've already, already preempted this. Probably the days of the really big, unselected trials in GI cancer are, are over. Uh, we're moving into a phase of, of personalized oncology and targeted therapy. And a lot of the new trials, including some which are either open now or about to open, uh, are targeted. I mean, you, do, you do a test, you determine whether the treatment is appropriate for that patient on the basis, for instance, of a KRAS mutation status, and then they're randomized on that basis. So the trials will be smaller numbers, but uh, the therapy will be targeted and the patients we know are more likely to respond because of this, this selection. Um, I think there are not enough randomized trials in GI surgery alone. Now the classic trial and the FACT trial, which is uh, not analyzed yet, that is the colorectal cancer follow-up trial, follow trial show sure, it is actually possible to recruit, but it is vastly more work to get surgeons to recruit to clinical trials that it is for medical oncologists to do. And we really need a culture shift if we're going to be taken seriously. Surgeons don't recruit well to trials with arms that do not entirely concord with what they believe to be best, irrespective of the evidence base, which usually doesn't, doesn't exist. I think the surgeons are to be taken seriously by funding bodies. And there is a tremendous, I mean, there is, there is a lot of will out there to fund surgical trials. We just need to be vastly more engaged than we have been in the past. And this involves uh, considering the possibility that their own prejudices might be wrong. Thank you very much.